Hello everyone, here's a quick video on laws of sines and cosines uh, when dealing with acute triangles. Let's begin with the sine law review and then little things that I like to do, hence the Troyism. First thing I like to do, as we've discussed in class, is I like to make a little setup or a menu just so we can organize all the details in the diagram. So what I mean by this is I'm just going to write out my angles and my side lengths. Why I do this is this helps me determine if I should use sine law or cosine law. If I have a completed row, I know I can use sine law. If I don't have a completed, a completed row, I know then to use cosine law. So angle A is 65 degrees, uh, B is 35 degrees, C we don't know. Um, side B, remember that if this is angle B, the side opposite angle B would be side B, so that's 41. And then A, angle A, the opposite would be side A. And that is what we're looking at. So you can see here, I have a completed row, so I know this is going to be sine law. Now that's an important technique to know, um, because when, as you move on, there's some triangles you won't be told to use sine or cosine. You have to make that decision yourself. Um, there's other ways to do it, but that's really the simplest. You don't have to worry about side, 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 angle, side, angle, all that type of thing. You can kind of look at this row and know what to do. Okay, now let's get solving this. So, um, we're looking for angle A. I always like to put the thing I'm looking for, the unknown, in the top left of my proportion in the sine law. So I am going to go sine, or angle A, I'm sorry, side A over sine A, and then side B over sine B. And now I'll start writing the information in. So A over sine 65. Uh, B is 41 over sine 35. Now why I like to put the unknown in the top left is because then I don't really have to cross multiply. I will cross multiply this time to show you um, or just to go through the normal process but then I'll highlight where I'm really kind of doing something I don't need to do. Um, by putting something in the top left, the unknown in the top left, you really only have to do part of your cross multiplication. But as I said, I'll go through the whole thing just so I don't confuse people. So here's my cross multiplication. Um, so I'd have A times sine 35 equals 41 times sine 65 And then I want to get the A by itself, so then that means I have to divide the sine 35 out. And if you look, sine 35 began in the denominator of the second fraction, and I moved it and then brought it right back to the denominator in the second fraction. So I can skip that step. I really only need to, I'll switch my color here, um, work on this cross multiplication. So in future examples, I'll highlight the shortcut, but uh, just know that there is a shortcut. And if you want to use it, you can, you don't have to though. So back to solving, um, anything divided by itself equals one. So then A is going to be equal to 41 times sine 65, all divided by sine 35. That ends up being 64.78. And I didn't write units down, so I'll just put U for units. Um, it's important to learn how to use your calculator, and once you learn how to use your calculator, not to lose that calculator. Um, if you have questions with how to use your calculator, you'll need to ask a teacher. Come find me or come email me. Uh, I can help you with that as well. All right, let's look at another example. So to begin, let's write our little uh, setup. Sorry, I have some kind of inking uh, issues here with my uh, stylus. Anyway, angle A is 74. I'm not sure what angle B is. Um, side A, again, it ends up being opposite angle A, so that's 11. And then side B is going to be opposite angle B, so that ends up being 6. All right, um, you can see I have my row, so I know it is sine law. So once again, if I didn't have a row, then it'd be cosine law. All right, let's get solving. Um, I'm going to begin by putting my unknown in the top left, so that's sine B over B, um, and then that's going to be sine A 
over A. Um, sine B, I don't know, so I leave it as sine B. Little b, side length of b is 6. Sine 74 over 11. And this time I'll show you that shortcut method. So we already proved before that when I cross multiply, I'll move the 11, but then I'll divide by 11 so it comes right back. So we can kind of avoid that. And I'm only going to do partial, a partial cross multiplication. And I'm just going to work with those two. So what it looks like is I have sine b. Switch back to black, sorry. Sine b um, equals 6 times sine 74. So I did part of the cross multiplication. Again, this is just me knowing a pattern. I really should use cross multiplication, but this pattern ends up happening. So if you identify a pattern, by all means use it. Um, divided by 11. And then I want angle b. Okay, so then I go sine inverse... 6 times sine 74 divided by 11. I like using these square brackets when I do that. Um, and then now you just have to type that into your calculator. Uh, once you do that, you should get 31.63. And then I guess degrees. Perfect. Okay, so let's go over cosine law now. Um, once again, I'm going to use my little uh, setup or menu to write all my details out. Um, sine law is the quicker one, so people tend to like sine law a little bit more. Cosine law is not tough, but there is more calculations involved. All right, let's begin. So angle A, angle B, angle C, side A, side B, side C. Um, so I know angle C is 15 degrees. I know that little a or side a is 14. I know that then, whoa, sorry. Angle b ends up being 12. And I can see here that I am looking for x, which happens to be in x, or sorry, in the c or side c position. All right. Um, we need to go over the cosine law just to remember what the cosine law is. There's three different versions of it. I'm not sure if I'll have room for all of it up here, but a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cos a. Okay, so there's some pattern in that. Um, whatever letter you start with, whatever side you start with, you then use that angle. And then contained in the rest of the equation or law, you just use the other side. So it's going to be the other two sides squared minus 2 times the other two sides. Um, so I keep going. I can write the b version. b squared equals, now it's going to be a squared plus c squared minus 2ac times cos of b. And then the last one, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab uh, cos c. Perfect. Fit it in there. All right, so those are three versions. There's, um, we could rearrange those versions as well because we can isolate this formula or rework this uh, formula so you can highlight the angle. We'll do that in the next example, but for now we're good because we're looking for a side length. All right, so I got to pick the appropriate one. I'm looking for C, so that means I'm going to end up using this version of it. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times cos c. Now I'll start plugging all the information in. So 14 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 14 times 12. So those numbers are repeated. And then cos of, where's my angle again? 15 degrees. All right, so when now it really turns into a calculator question. Just remember that there's really three sets of numbers being multiplied. So here's one set. That's easy. There's another one. And then this is one number. Just It's in factored form. There's one, two, three, four things being multiplied. And you'll see in the next step, it'll just turn to a number. So we'll start working through things. 14 squared is, ends up being 196. 12 squared ends up being 144. And then when I multiply these four things, 2 times 14 times 12 times cos of 15 ends up getting uh, negative 324. 
All right. Once again, if you're having trouble with your calculator and need to talk to somebody, you can always get a hold of me, email, come find me at school, whatever it is. Um, now that I'm just going to combine these numbers, because these are really just like terms now, um, it ends up being 15.45. And you got to remember that is actually c squared. I want c, so to get rid of c squared, I end up taking the square root. c equals 3.93. All right, so that's cosine law. We'll do one more example of cosine law. Same start as always. Angle A, angle B, angle C, A, B, C. You don't need to use that setup if you don't want, but if you're having trouble at all, I suggest using it. It cleans things up really quick. Uh, you can see here that I don't have any angles, but I'm looking for angle C. Um, I just got to write my side lengths down now. So A ends up being 7, B ends up being 6, C ends up being 5. Hope that doesn't look too messy to you. Um, again, now we got to figure out which version of the cosine law we're going to use. So we need something with angle C in it. All right, so that means we're going to have to use the C squared version. Um, let's write that out c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times cos c. And you can use this, you can just plug everything in and solve for cos c, that's absolutely fine. Or if you wish, you could rework this formula and uh, just have isolate cos c. Um, I'm just going to leave the formula alone um, for this video, but if you want to see Another way to do it, you might like it, you might even consider it a shortcut. Um, I can show you the other way as well in class or again via email, you let me know. So I'll just write these things in. So okay, so 5 squared, a squared, b squared, minus 2 times 7 times 6, and then times cos c. Alright, so start writing or start writing the values of these, evaluating those, I guess. So 25, 49, plus 36. Um, and then I'm going to put these together. So that ends up being negative 84 times cos c. And again, I am uh, I have to solve for this cos c, so I have to use my equation rules and move everything away. So I'm going to subtract 49. I'm going to subtract 36, so subtract 49, subtract 36. All right, so that's going to equal negative 60. Um, now that is equal to negative 84 times cos c. So you can see we've gotten closer to having cos c isolated. Uh, again, Equation rules, so perform the opposite operation to get to the opposite side. So right now, negative 84 and cos c is, are being multiplied, so I have to divide to get the negative 84 onto the other side. Once I divide those, I end up getting 0 0.7143. I'll round it off, four decimal places, equals cos c. All right, and we want angle C, not the cosine of C. So what you have to end up doing is you have to take the inverse cos. So we're used to going from a value and determining the angle. Now we already have the value and we want to know what the angle is. So inverse opposite direction, again, you're used to having, um, having an angle, I'm sorry, and then finding the value. Now we have the value, we want to find that angle. So once you plug that into your calculator, you'll see that is 44 degrees. All right, so that's a review of sine law and cosine law with a couple troisms in there. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, come find me. Otherwise, have a great day.